So I'm here to tell you all that I know about keeping your hands warm whilst in winter or in cold water diving. In getting this right, not only will you be able to stay in the water longer, but you'll be able to enjoy your dive and you'll be able to hold your cup of tea when you get out. But more importantly, if you can still use your fingers, you'll be of some use to someone should an emergency arise. Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to another video in this series of scuba diving tutorial. In this episode we're going to be discussing how to keep your hands and your feet warm during cold water diving. If this is your first time here make sure you click the subscribe that way you'll be able to look back through all our other videos dead easy and while you're there if you click the little bell icon at the side of it you'll get a notification to say oh we posted another video so let's go and have a look at Andy's videos. But if you haven't got a YouTube account what are you going to do? If you click the little icon just up here that'll take you to a video that'll show you how you go about setting one up if you've never done one before. And make sure you stick around to the end where I'll be giving you one of my top tips. A good brew always helps to start with. This In this case, it's chicken noodle soup. It's quite nice, actually. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I was up at Cape and Ray, diving on my own. And I, in between dives, I spoke to one of the guys in the shop saying how cold my feet were and how I bought these really expensive socks and how they just didn't seem to make any difference to whether I had them on or a thin pair. So he said, well, what are you wearing on your feet while you're in the water? So I wear rock boots and the ones I wear are from Aqualung. And as you can see, quite close up, there's quite a lot of mesh around the side of it. So what you get is what's called flushing. So water will enter the shoe and, and come straight out. So there's no, no water so much held in the boot itself. So what he suggested is get yourself a wetsuit boot, a couple of sizes too big for you. That way you can get your, or your dry suited foot dry yeah dry suited foot in this shoe and the, the neoprene that it's made of will keep some water within there won't flush it in and out so it'll be that little bit warmer than what the surrounding water is although it's not going to have contact with your body it will just be marginally warmer therefore you'll be marginally warmer I'm just going to try and get all the noodles out oh thanks for the text message during the sort of summer warmer months I'll have this really thin sort of builder's glove cheaply available for about £1, £1.50 from any sort of hardware store or supermarket them kind of places it's literally like your most billy basic gardening glove so it's just a cotton elasticated outer with some sort of rubber textured piece so it's a bit easier to grab whilst you're underwater and they're wet they're ideal um, anywhere in the world where the water is pretty warm so I'd probably take them out to the Red Sea or somewhere in the Canaries, Mediterranean and that. Just summer diving. Maybe over here if it gets warm enough. But they're enough to keep my hands warm in that kind of weather. Maybe if I was snorkelling um, or, or perhaps in slightly cooler, so maybe spring or autumn, but the water was relatively warm, I'd just get a really thin neoprene glove. Now, they're absolutely great, these, because they're cheap. You can buy them off the internet or whatever for less than sort of a tenner. The problem I always find is the fingertips always wear through. It's always them two. Um, I don't know why, but it always is. They have a textured sort of palm, if you will, uh, and a Velcro strap. The, the benefit of that, you can get it nice and tight if you feel you need it, but it keeps the water in so that water will continue to get warm off your body temperature and in turn, get your hands feeling warm. So that's always a big deal. I personally prefer though, a dry glove. So. With my dry glove system, I tend to find everybody's glove are black or dark grey, so you can't see their hands. So with my da with my with my dry glove system, I wear it like a marigold glove, like a washing up glove. So inside it's black. It could be pink, it could be yellow, whatever. But I've turned it inside out. The reason being is it's it's got like a, a rougher texture on the outside, and it's bright white. So if you see that up against my top versus this black glove that I've just tried on, one clearly stands out more than the other. So assuming that we're in quite dark water um, and if I'm giving you an okay signal, at least that against my top will stand out nice and bright, whereas it probably wouldn't if I had a black glove on. So a white glove, always much better. So these are the nice thin ones and I wear these pretty much 80% of the year. Um, but since I went to the dive show at the weekend, a couple of weekends ago, um, 
they told me about a sort of different system that I'm not using or wasn't using that should help keep my hands warmer. So starts off with a thin sort of cotton glove that keeps my hand nice and snug. It's, it covers all my fingers perfectly. It's the right size for me. Then what we're going to do is get one of these little hotties. So these are heat pads. As soon as they come out of this packet, they start to warm up and they get 46 degrees, it says on here, can get that warm. So you take one of these out, it's got a sticky pad. So I put that on the palm of my hand. It's not in contact with my skin, which is quite important because of how hot it gets. And then once I've got that on, I put on this Icelandic wool in a glove. It's one size bigger than perhaps I would normally buy if I was just wearing them. That's to take into account wearing the liner glove underneath the blue one. So now that that's on, it fits all nice and snug. Okay, the pad's in place inside. I put my actual dry glove on. Now, these were new as well. I don't know if you can see that on there. So you've got a textured outer. Now the reason for being textured is so you can grab stuff. That's the first one. But these are a lot thicker and they're perhaps more for the cave diver or wreck diver than just someone who goes around just taking pictures of reef scenery and stuff and doesn't touch anything. But they are nice and bulky. My hands are relatively you know, filling of, of the fingertips, perhaps not as long as they could be, but certainly I can move my hand around and I don't feel like it's too constricted. And then obviously I've got the dry cuff, which fits into the cuff of my dry suit. But that to me, I, I dived that a couple of weekends ago. It was absolutely perfect. Other than the fact it's, you, you lose your dexterity, you can't feel the ends of your fingertips as such, and you can't really grab what you could beforehand. Um, like with a na the naked hand, it's absolutely perfect for keeping my hands warm, which at this time of year, let's be honest, that's what you're after, isn't it? So that's that, the dry glove system with the heat pad. Uh, so two options we've got then, and neoprene gloves. These are a lot thicker than the ones I showed you earlier on, and a lot slicker, okay? And they've got a zip, so it feels nice and secure, nice and tight. Uh, now I actually used this last weekend, I was surfing down in South Wales, and if I've got any gripe about it at all, is that the zip is so easy to come undone. There's no means of locking it to stop it just coming down. So when I was paddling along on my surfboard, I found that was coming done quite often and water would flush in, like cold water from the sea would flush in and then warm water from inside the glove would flush out. So I had particularly cold hands. But a, a flipping belting glove. Now, if you look on the inside, they've got this sort of slick fabric. Now this helps keep the water in so it almost like grabs all your skin so the more water you can keep from flushing in and out the better whereas as these ones have like a, a sort of thermal lining uh, designed to just dry really quickly so again a really thick glove the main difference is we've got a velcro strap here to keep that shut i prefer that because it's less likely to come undone and you can get it really tight if if your glove isn't as good fitting as this one with the zip then you can pull this one with the strap really tight and, and, and really get some some sort of grab on there so for me it's the one with the strap again the fingertips started to wear away so i just lend them out to my mates now rather than wearing myself so my top tip then would be if you're diving with neoprene gloves on take yourself a flask of hot water in and you can fill your gloves up with that hot water to make them warm before you put them on that way your hands aren't frozen as you're getting in the water and drink loads of tea because that keeps your tummy all nice and warm so if you've got any other thoughts or if you agree or disagree with any of the comments that i've made today be sure to put them in the comments box at the bottom and i'll get back to you give you a thumbs up i'd like to say thanks for watching keep watching the rest of the series a link of which i've put up here which will send you on to that so you can see the rest of the stuff we've done and i'll see you on the next one thanks for watching on Insta.